Welcome to Geek Do-It-Yourself Mechanic. The purpose of this video is to talk about the dreaded DTC, Diagnostic Trouble Code. So if you ever notice on my home page, one of the images I show shows trouble codes, P0300, P0430, P0171. Why? Because that's generally when you know you need to work on the car. So what happens is you're driving or you just start the car and you see the dreaded check engine light. So as we all know, when you first you put the key in and you go to the on position, your instrument cluster, all the lights, idiot lights and these check engine lights and all that should illuminate for a little bit. Make sure that happens. Then you start the car and when the car is uh, has no issues the check engine light goes off but again this video is talking about what do you do when you see the check engine light and how did that get illuminated what you generally do you see a check engine light you'll get your scan tool and you'll pull the codes and most scan tools will at least tell you what they mean lean code misfire cylinder one whatever so how it's doing that is you plug the scan tool into the engine computer via DTC port uh, it's usually under the dash on the driver's side and it communicates with the computer onboard computer and pulls the trouble codes well, when I first did it, you know, I see these trouble codes. I'm like, well, how did it how did it know to set this trouble code? What do they mean? So I did some some studying, and I'd like to share what I have found. In 1970s, Los Angeles was pretty smoggy, so the EPA created some some standards that all cars that were to be sold uh, in the US had to fulfill those standards and it was pretty good standard the air did did clean up but there was an issue all manufacturers implemented it their own way to meet that requirement secondly their diagnostic trouble codes were all unique so that meant you actually had to have a scan tool and connector each connector was unique for each manufacturer so trouble codes were unique you needed your own scanner in addition they didn't necessarily ensure that the system continued to run they didn't test the individual components of the system so in an effort to improve it to even take it to where we are now the EPA worked with the Society of Automotive, Automotive Engineers to create the OBD2 standard. So all cars from 96 to current implement the OBD2 standard. And that's what we're going to focus on since most likely that's the cars we will work on. This standard specified a generic set of DTCs so if any car manufacturer has a uh, lean condition it will set the P0171 error. In addition there's a generic set of PIDs that must be supported that all cars must show. A PID is a parameter ID. Parameter ID is a real-time value the computer contains. For example engine coolant temperature, throttle position, things like that. In addition, the manufacturers are allowed to have their own specific PIDs and DTCs. Along with this standard, they created a specification for the DTC port. In other words, if you remember, that's where you plug your scanner into. So that right there is an OBD2 port. 
that was specified as part of the standard. So now you can use one connector across all manufacturers that were to be sold in the U.S. since 1996. They also specified a set of readiness tests that the computer must pass and periodically check to ensure the code the car is not producing any codes. For example, one such test is to make sure your catalytic converter's efficiency is still working. So what that means is in OBD1 it just had a oxygen sensor before the catalytic converter that would make sure the engine was running in the proper 14.7 to 1 ratio. But it didn't make sure the catalytic converter was removing all the harmful contaminants from the exhaust gas before it went out. So in the OBD2 standard there's a oxygen sensor after downstream of the catalytic converter. So the computer monitors both those O2 sensors to ensure the catalytic converter is going. So that's how the OBD2 uh, really improved things is that it made it uh, a standard for all manufacturers and also it self-checks itself. Another self-check is it makes sure the EGR system is working correctly. So to me the you know I, th I think the OBD2 really helps standardize cars and it really did clean up the air. So let's talk about the trouble code itself. So we'll break it into four columns. You might pull a P0301 from your scan tool. Wait, let's break it down. So the first column specifies the subsystem. Powertrain, body, chassis, network communication. Network communication would be uh, related to issues of the multi-controllers in your car communing amongst each other via CAN bus. For example, the ABS and the main uh, ECM are two controllers, but they can communicate because they do need to talk to each other. The next column is the type of code. Is it SAE generic or is it manufacturer specific? The third is the system affected air fuel control for number one number two fuel injector problem three ignition system misfire four auxiliary emission component like EGR air pump cat evap system five vehicle speed idle control problem six a computer problem seven and eight are transaxle transmission problem and then the fourth column is a specific issue or component in that system Let's, let's do an example to bring that one home. So I'm going to type in P0301. It's a misfire cylinder 1. How did it know cylinder 1? Well, that's what the 1 represents in this code. So if I did 2, it would be cylinder 2. So that's how uh, uh, these codes came about. There's a standard. So when you talk to a mechanic and you say I have a P0302, they know exactly what you're talking about, misfire cylinder 2. Well, now that we know what a code is, how does that help us? What exactly is that code telling us? Well, I felt to explain what a code is, I would explain it in my language the best, and I'm a programmer. I think you'll be able to follow me even if you're not a programmer. Let's hope I'm right. Okay, let's start out. We declare our variables. X and Y are integers. Z is a double. And then there's lots of code here. I'll come back to this. And somewhere along in the program, I want to divide X by Y and put that into Z. Well, one such issue I could have with this operation is a divide by zero that would be analogous to a DTC. What does that DTC tell me? It tells me Y is equal to zero. But it didn't tell me how Y became zero. We know it had to be in lots of code here. That is where the knowledge 
of your car or the subsystem having the issue is needed. So in this case, the lots of code here could be a lookup from the database. It could be talking to a remote web service returns you that information. Uh, it could be a UI entered information. But you see what I'm saying? It's implementation or system specific of what could cause that. So that is why as I come across great videos that either help you diagnose or give you an example of tests of that specific DTC, I'll list them here for you. They're for my reference to and for yours. So in this case, if you got a P, P0302, you could look here and see additional information. And Scanner Danner is one of the greatest resources out there. There's many others too. Schrodinger's Box, uh, Eric the Car Guy, uh, and numerous other resources I have on this website. And I'll add because there's more and more great mechanics out there willing and wanting to share their knowledge. And as I come across, across those, I'll add them here. So in essence, you're sort of getting, if you remember the, the scan tool video, you're getting sort of that resource database a little bit. That's much better theirs because they'll not only look at the DC, DTC, they'll look at your make model to even hone down the tests more precisely. But this is still a great uh, tool. I use it. Um, and it'll continue to evolve as I get more content and I find uh, great videos. In summary, the purpose of the video was to give a little history to OBD1, OBD2, what is a DTC, how does it come about, what does it represent, right, an exception, tells you there's a problem. You then need to research the systems affected to see what the potential issue could be. What is the root cause that caused the issue? I think I've covered everything. Uh, again, the motivation for this video was when I was starting out, I didn't understand this. I didn't have the information uh, readily available to me to explain this to me. I hope I did you that service. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the information helpful.